Welcome back everybody. This is another tank session, Naked Line BC. I uh, put a poll on my Instagram stories. And this time you want me to tie the foam dragon. So <clears throat> this was my take on Stanton Jack's kind of uh, uh, his fly that he made, which was also a foam dragon. The majority of it is Stanton Jack, um, his, his fly that he made, but uh, did a little bit of an alteration just for myself, um, just because I'm a kind of a hot spot freak. So I'll be using Textream ADOT Chartreuse, big Chartreuse guy, purple, as you know, too, but I'm not using purple today. Uh, <clears throat> chartreuse scud back and one eighth. Uh, you can use any scud back you want. You can use, uh, you know, opal tinsel, stuff like that, ASB, even if you want to. It's totally up to you. The combinations are limitless, and I don't know, just play around with it. Pretty cool. But uh, this one's a little bit more in depth, so I'll go through the process as best as I can with you. with um video and not uh pictures so it's a little bit tougher but we'll get through it <clears throat> you can always pause and kind of take a look at it but i'll be using a dry fly traditional size 8 rx of course and again if you're ready, your choice i'm using chartreuse 8 dot textream and two millimeter brown foam, sheet foam. And later on for the paint job, got some artwork we're gonna do, Sharpies. This one is neon, green, chartreuse, black, brown. Uh, <clears throat> gonna need some pheasant tail. I'm rocking the brown. But not that many materials. It's a nice fly. It's easier than a gomphus. Your hair gomphus, less mess, less time consuming. So it's it's killer. The video is gonna be a little bit longer, but when you time on your own, it's gonna be quicker. <clears throat> so the way that we got this going on is I made a template, and this is the way that Stanton does it. He takes his hook. And I'm gonna try and make it as best as I can for you to see. So you lay it in the middle and you take your pen and you draw a line. You line up your hook eye to the edge of the foam, draw a line down the hook shank right until the bend, and then you make a T. So then you pull your hook off and you now put it lined up the hook eye on the T and you draw another line down the hook shank to the bend. So then you have, you're left with one long straight line. After that, you're gonna take your pen and you're gonna draw a small oval to the T portion. And then you're gonna make your big oval for the back section. The long tail looking thing is gonna end up being your eyes for the dragon. Now, <clears throat> mistake that I made for first crack I did at it after watching Stanton was I didn't make this thick enough or wide enough so give yourself a little extra room to make this piece wide enough so once you're done that <clears throat> you're gonna cut it out now cutting foam wire any of those materials with scissors is gonna dull it over time. So grab a pair of scissors that you don't care so much about or a cheaper pair of scissors, something that you're not too worried about replacing over a period of time because they will dull out after a run of these. So I'm just cutting it out 
slowly. It's like elementary school again. Okay, <clears throat> so you're left with your body. <clears throat> Next, you're going to take your hook. Excuse me, got some hair on there. Take your hook, and that T that you made, you're going to slide your hook right into that T. Just give me a sec so I don't poke myself here or rip the foam. <clears throat> so slide your hook in, and there goes your body, just like that. Now, pop her in the vise, and we're good to go. All right, next, <clears throat> excuse me, take your thread and wind it down your shank. Start over. Not happy with that. My body's in the way. And I don't go right up to the hook eye, so I give myself some space for later on. And I'll show you why. I'm back up. Snip your tag. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jeez. Okay. So now we're just going to capture the tip of this body. And you're going to set it back roughly an eighth from the hook eye. And just tie it in three or four wraps. You're good. <clears throat> All right, next, your scud back. Here's my chartreuse scud back. You're gonna want to cut a point into your scud back, just for ease of tying in. You have a little arrow. <clears throat> Just getting over a cold. So it happens when you have kids. Alright, tie in your point, a few wraps, take your sky back, flip it over towards the hook eye. You're gonna wanna do a few wraps there, secure it down, okay, and we're good to go. Now the next part's kind of tricky. This is when you're gonna have to do the segments for the body, for the dragon. And as you know, if you've ever seen a dragonfly nymph, dragon body, they start out small, then the segments go larger as they get to the middle, and then they slowly taper off near the butt. So I'm gonna start out small. And you just gotta wiggle your thread over there. I'm holding my foam in place with my body. Three wraps. Next segment, you're just going to kind of pull your thread, get it where you want it. <clears throat> it's the tricky part. A little bit of a perfectionist, so bear with me. Because I want to cooperate. All right, since I'm down, next, we're gonna do five of these. <clears throat> That's three. There's four, right at the end. Now, that's where I'm gonna stop. 
So we're starting to get our segment now. All right. Oh, I'm going to take my glue. Just to make it a little bit stronger. A couple of dabs on the thread. Can eliminate any sliding. Take our body. And you want to make a little bum right at the back. So there's our bum. <clears throat> okay. So here's the interesting part. In our bum, in our body, we have our basic template for the dragon. So we're gonna pull this back. We're gonna have to work quick because we got glue. One, two, three. Just to start. And then we're gonna put our body down over top. One, two, three. There's your first segment. Pull this up, skip your thread, and lay it back down. And you're going to do this over and over until you get to the top again. One, two, three. Pull your phone back. Once. Skip to the next section. One, two, three. Pull your body back. Skip up to the next section, which is our last one. And we go back over top. One, two, three. <clears throat> okay, so there's our body. Not too bad. Kind of moving around just before the glue sets. Okay, so here's our eyes. This remainder piece here. We're not wanna gonna cinch it down quite yet. I wanna get it in place just like so. Give it a little bend. Take your thread. One, two, three, four, five. And you're going to want to whip finish that. Gives you a little reassurance. Now, take your scissors that you don't care about and you want to come in there and snip off that excess foam. Nice, close, take your time because you don't want to wreck your fly <clears throat> after doing all that work. And you're going to want to take your thread, don't build up a collar or a thorax, but you just want to get that piece excess that you cut off push down <clears throat> okay so now how Stanton does it is he likes to do a figure eight with the eyes sometimes it doesn't want to cooperate with, for, with me I've tried both ways where I run my scud straight up over top like so and it's fish fine but I've also done figure eight and if I can get it to cooperate We'll do it up. See, even good tires struggle. So I did three wraps toward the bum. And three wraps up towards the top. So there's our eyes. Next, I'm gonna color your eyes in. Nice and black. Take your time. It's kind of fun. It's got a little bit of everything on it to do, that is, for a fly. But 
takes a little bit longer but than your conventional flies, but this thing fishes mighty, mighty good. Okay, pheasant tail time. Actually, I'm skipping ahead. Body paint. So I'll take my green, and I like to cover just these outsides, like so. I can't see that side, I'm just trying to show you. Just gonna give it a quick rotate so I can see it. A little bit underneath as well. A little bit of the butt. I like to make kind of a U shape. So up by the eyes, I'll start open. And then when I get to the very end of the fly, I'll just do that small butt piece, full green. Now our brown. In the center, I'll just make it solid. And then, on, <clears throat> excuse me, on the outer edges, when it just touches the green, I'll just kind of speckle it. So it breaks it up and it looks more natural. Same with the bottom. It's starting to take shape, look real, real buggy like which is perfect for fish. But fishing these on a intermediate line, no bobber. Cassidy on the shoals, reeds, weeds, it's wicked. So now we're gonna take, I'm still getting ahead of myself. It's early in the morning, it's about one o'clock here. Um, pheasant tail fibers, you're gonna pick out stuff like this. The nice stuff. Pick seven or eight fibers out. These are going to be our wings. Okay. <clears throat> going to line them up just with the end of our body as best as you can. We're going to do a couple of loose wraps. Take a look before we really snug it down. I like to look right there. We have one extra wrap. I'll we'll just cut it out using my fat scissors, my foam scissors. Okay. Another eight fibers or so. of the uh, pheasant tail. Eight on the dot. That's money. Didn't really even count that. Seems I'm not cooperating. Back it off. Okay. Same thing again, a couple loose wraps, and it looks good there. All right, thank you for your patience. Next, we're going to snip that out. It's starting to take shape here. Now, finally, my scud back. Just gonna pull some tension on it and we're gonna take it over the eyes. That's our wing case. Three wraps, four or five. Snug it down real nice. You can uh cut 
thread a V if you want into the wing case. I don't know if Stanton does. Because that guy is meticulous, meticulous perfectionist. And you see his work and it's unbelievable. The guy's awesome. Uh, happy to be on a team, share a team with that guy. Now we're going to uh, quick whip finish. You can throw some glue in there if you want. But that is pretty much it. Get in there, get your thread out. <clears throat> Bob's your uncle. So there is the foam dragon. Now, hold on to your rod, because these things are gonna fish unbelievable. Remember the first time I tied this up, I went and fished it, like I messaged Stanton, I was like, holy smokes, man, like these crush. And he's like, oh yeah. I said, what What uh, made you wanna tie that, like that? And he said, I hate deer hair, like the rest of us. So, good little backstory, but no, these things fish unbelievable. I type them on, or I fish them on my type three line, and uh, it's perfect line for these. I cast them into the shoal and I retrieve them and they just get smacked. And they actually hold up really, really well too. They're quite durable. So uh, I'd much, much prefer tying those over any deer hair gonfus, gonfus any day. Deer hair gonfus is an unbelievable fly and I definitely appreciate it for what it is. But I find like one, this looks more realistic it's got segmentation, it's got color, it's, you know, it's got the wings, everything. Deer hair gumpus is pretty basic. It's just shaped uh, deer hair with a razor blade, obviously, but, you know, at the same time, it's all about profile of fish really well, so. But I definitely, definitely encourage you to have some of these in your box. They're killer. They're super good. Definitely a staple out on the water. Uh, come ice off. Um, so yeah, give them a shot. Be patient. Take your time. Try the infinite combinations. I've tried chartreuse, the brown. I've tried orange. I've tried a little bit of yellow. I've tried um, rusty browns, all that stuff. And I mean, it's endless and it, they're all, all fishable and work really, really well. So give it a go. All right. Thanks, guys and gals. See you soon.